Yeah, you might want to stay on and watch later this evening, Buried Alive, that documentary right here on the Join News channel. But today is uh, an international day for nurses. We're celebrating nurses uh, all across the world. I've got uh, a nurse with me here this morning. I, I know what you th some, some people don't have good experiences with nurses. So by just the, the mention of nurses, it brings back some bad memories. Today we want to hear the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, but whichever way, some there are some great nurses in this country that we're celebrating today. Kobe Blame is a psychiatric nurse and he's my guest. We're talking uh, nurses, 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 nurses. Kobe, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Mm. I want to hear from you, your own mouth. What do you think people think about nurses? Where, uh, when we mention nurses, what do people usually say here in our country? Um, I think... Uh or oh, this is what I know. People believe nurses are magic performers. Oh. They are lifesavers. They turn things around. Okay. And so, well, they will cast their hopes on the nurses the very moment they arrive at the hospital and expect that in a, a, a twinkle of an eye, like, it should be, uh, health should be restored to them mm. or whoever they have brought in to the clinic area. But um, sometimes expectations fail uh, due to certain constraints, possibly maybe not by the nurses. So in the end, some may go home with some disappointment. But I, 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 through my experience, I think the people have so much, still have the faith in the nurses. Mm. They still believe they are the very caring that they should be. Yeah. We may have a few issues, but <laughs> I think it does not surpass the very good that has been happening mm. and people do go away with Do we have a lot of men, uh, male nurses in Ghana? I'm not sure about that. We don't have a lot of that. And so um, it's dominated more by women. By women. Yeah. Okay. I met one brilliant nurse, uh, a male nurse really, uh, at the 37 military hospital. Yeah. can't remember his name. A couple of years uh, ago when my dad was not well he was really really nice uh, but sometimes i tend to think oh the men are nicer than the women <laughs> what do you think i think it's like um a lady who is into military or who's in the force so you find out that they some of them are even much more smarter than even the men so it's like that but that is what nursing is about we are supposed to be nice is supposed to be caring as much as we have to mm. be. So we just carry the the symbol of or what we stand, what nursing stands for. That is what is your job really? What's the job of a nurse? We know that you are the f first point of call when we come into the hospital. Is the nurse that you see, uh, if not the administrator, but the nurse is always the first person. But what, what, what is your job really in the hospital? You see, actually, we were not supposed to be the first point to be seen. But our job now is 360, so we are playing the, the role of everyone in the hospital. We are even playing the role as family surrogates, so <laughs> it's like that. But there are different cadre of nurses, and everyone performs a particular uh, or has some responsibilities that they perform. And so it varies, but what we do, we take care of are in three forms. We are taking either the physical part, we are taking psychological issues, or we are managing the social issues mm. of a person who arrives at the hospital. So someone may come in with a general condition, the abdomen is hurting, but he or she may be worried about an issue. We have to manage the abdomen or the, the pain, wherever it may be, and as well provide some social support to this person. Oh, really? Yes. We do all that's is, is that part of you like your core responsibility yes it is so if i have some worries i mean if i need somebody to talk to is the nurse sure um in my duty as a psychiatric nurse um i'm supposed to provide some form of counseling or what we call the psychotherapy um to continue reassuring this person who reports to the hospital because sometimes you need to motivate someone to do something mm. and you cannot go and bring the family or whoever that is the closest to this person 
But you, the nurse, have to put yourself in that shoes. You have to play the role of a husband to some extent, though. You have to play the role of a wife, a mother, a father, and be able to convince this person to provide or to respond to the care that you are giving. Because the care we give must be in and out. If we are giving medication, we expect that you comply with what we are giving. If we are supposed to take you through some exercises or some programs, we expect that, well, after being educated, being taught, being made to understand what treatment or what management we are going to give you, you will be able to give us your consent. Because if you do not give our consent, or in any case where consent is not given to any form of treatment, we cannot continue. Mm -hmm. So it is like, if you have to get well, then you also have some responsibilities that you also have to give it to us. Yeah, but yeah. that's in the psychiatric hospital. So I, I kind of see uh, where you have to be there for the patients. Yeah. F not necessarily because of that ill health, but maybe other emotional uh, concerns. How about the, you know, the person, the nurse that, for instance, you find when you go to the rich hospital, if it's not a psychiatric problem, do they also have a certain emotional responsibility towards you? I am so sure the first time the nurse met you, he said he f had to ask, how are you doing? Now he went on or she went on to um, find out how your condition is affecting you. Mm. They, they go on to find out about your relatives, how are they coping with the condition. They are supposed to carry out an order of giving you a medication, telling you to go to the laboratory. But they go to that extra mile to find out about all this. They have to keep reassuring you. So even if you are in the labor ward, they have to encourage you to be able to deliver that baby. Mm. If you have to take a medication for a pain, some people fear injections. You have to try and convince them, touch them, let them feel okay, feel safe, feel that they are being protected and whatever mm. you are giving them is for the good of them you realize that in all these things there is some kind of psychological support that comes in you are trying to tell the person that i will be there for you mm. if you need help even when someone is discharged we say that when you go and you have any problem give us a call or come back to us those are support care mm. that kind of kindness that we go the extra mile to yeah. show these people they are very petty so sometimes you say that when i went i was not given any medicine when i went the nurse it did not even do this for me mm -hmm. this is what the people are expecting but sometimes through assessment you find out that this person may need this kind of care and so the nurse may just do as that but the people have an expectation and if that is not met they might go with their own impression but like that that psychological that social support always is happening when someone comes to the hospital and is unable to pay for the bills, some nurses come together and pay bills for these people. But those are the stories that are almost missing. Unfortunately, people, people because what you hear, for instance, is good you went to the labor ward. What you hear when peop some people are giving birth is that some, some of the nurses will say, are they one year old? You know, like you hear stories of, and sometimes friends would share it. You know, like I, w I went to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital or the polyclinic yeah. beds, and the nurses were really rude. I mean, it, it's as if pregnancy is nothing. I don't know, Cheche and Hosa. These are some of the stories we hear, and they are real. But, but we also have a lot of stories that appreciate the, 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 the nurses' role mm -hmm. in these same places where a mother comes to the hospital with absolutely nothing, and nurses have to come together, put their money. We become financiers so we have to put together our money and be able to buy some items for these pregnant women who is about to deliver who does not have anything who cannot find the husband whose family has abandoned her and nurses come together to put in some money they they they, they feed this person morning afternoon evening but like we, i have said earlier these stories have been missing because we always want the very perfect of service so when there is even a very minute mistake mm. that comes from someone, it is projected so much. Well, yes, we need but to have that perfect yeah. situation. But this is a human institution. Yeah, but especially when you're not well, you're not expecting excuses. Yes, when you're not be well, no you want to be pampered. And if that's part of the responsibility of the nurse, then they have no excuse. Okay, so 
there should be no excuses, but this is a nurse in one health post or one hospital somewhere in the extreme. Now, when patients come, you can do certain things to an extent. Now, the doctors are limited in this same hospital, and she has to try all means to get to this doctor. Maybe she may have to walk from the hospital to the doctor's residence to call the doctor to come and give the nursery medication or treatment to the same person. She comes back and everybody keeps yelling at the nurse. Why are you not doing this for her? Why are you not doing this for her? There are lots of things we have to put in sometimes without even letting the patients know. Mm. Because sometimes they may not be good. You can't come back to the hospital in this instance and say that, when I went, I did not find a doctor. How, do pe how would you expect the, the people to take the uh, situation like, oh, meaning there is no solution for me? But you have to come back. Be bold, confident, be able to do something, convince them that please stay calm, everything will be all right. Sometimes people may need that reassurance continually, and we may be doing this. But these frustrations do set in sometimes from some nurses, and they are just a few, I can say. And it's all the fact that sometimes the stresses could be okay. so much. The stresses could be so much. Um, people sometimes could close from night duty, 12 hours of duty, and there may not be enough staff to carry on the day. And they will have to stay in and mm. do the eight hours work in the morning again. Imagine if you have to meet this nurse at around two o'clock when you have rushed in with an issue and he asks you, where did you bring this, did you bring all that? You know, the, the frustrations could, it's he, he or she's human. And sometimes these things could happen. But at the end of the day, we always ask for forgiveness whenever we hurt or we injure them. It may not be directly. Is that not when you realize that, oh, the doctor knows the patients very well, they are friends? Then you fear, oh, the patients could be telling the doctor something about me. Well, in the end, when the doctor <laughs> writes anything, it's the same nurse who carry out the duty. So, nurses, the doctor's role and the nurse's role are two pathways. Just that we all play that teamwork thing. Mm. We complement each other. Let me, let me, do you practice uh, privately too, as in in the private hospital? No, I worked, I've been employed to work in the government hospital and that is where I do. Okay. Some people think there's a difference between those nurses who work in the private hospital and those that work in the government hospital. But the interesting thing is, they are the same people. Because they, I had a nurse who took care of me in the, in the private hospital who worked, was working in Kolibu. Okay. So this was her private job that okay. she would come to. And people find them when they are in, in, in private practice nicer than when they're doing the government work. <laughs> Why is that so? Because I know that you've heard this. Um, I've not heard this. Hey, Kobe. <laughs> I've actually had a few experiences. And... I, this is what I believe that a lot more motivation happening in the private institution. If you say motivation, what do you mean? Is it financial? Yes, when you work, um, the returns of what you, your work, I think. And it may not be financial. A lot more of these private institutions could provide even residence mm. for these nurses, provide transportation for these nurses. Whereas in the government side, there are a lot of us, so there is not much resources to handle all of us at a go. So you find that some may have to be traveling from very far away to the hospital. Some may have to bear the paying up their own resident, like not much subsidized in any way. Some may have to put in extra to, to, to really get to work. But when you go to these private institutions, they do all that they could do to retain because one, well, we could say that well, their numbers are few. So what they are trying to do is, okay, let's try and maintain our number. There's a lot of marketing strategies that are being put in place mm. when you go to some of these private institutions. But I must also say that what I have found out is um, recently we have some unprofessional nurses more going into these private institutions. Or you may have not up to the standard the type of the, or the cater of nurses we should be having in performing their duties in some of these institutions because we are having some facilities springing up that are not under any form of regulation and that makes the healthcare delivery uh, shaky 
because when you are in the government institution whoever is called the nurse have gone through a training mm -hmm. a period of training have gone through the internship what we call the, the clinical practice internship somewhere and then have been given that license to perform in a hospital but you find you find some of these people who have not attained all these status practicing mm. in some of these private institutions so the, the the nurses you find in the public hospitals are more professionally trained than um, some who are in some private institutions that is not the point I'm making what I'm saying is because the regulation in some of these private institutions mm -hmm. it's lesser or sometimes missing you find people who have not gotten to that professional status practicing in there okay yes. but when you say in there are you talking about a government private, no i'm talking private. about private private okay. institution because in the government institution you are being you, when you work you are being paid and it is true an institution somewhere that checks who is this person what does he do mm -hmm. and they do it in collaboration with the council the the association governing the 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 the, the, the staff or the nurses in there so the regulation is higher mm. uh -huh. but when you go to some institution that do not have that regulation on them that that that, that regulation is almost missing then you find that people have been employed to give the same service but they aren't professional enough okay i'll tell you two things that we will do first of all we hit the streets we wanted to know uh, when we say nurses what people would say about nurses and then the second thing that I'll do here is I'll open the phone lines. Those who didn't have the opportunity to speak to us uh, on camera, you have the opportunity to speak to us right here. Let's hear uh, your nursing stories. And this could be, this could be good. Uh, we, we're, we're not saying just share the negatives with us. It could be positive as well. If there are people that we need to praise, uh, you can mention their names and let's say thank you to them for the care they've given you. Well, when we come back, uh, from listening to what people had to say to us when we hit the streets. We'll also talk about why some nurses tend to travel outside a lot. In fact, some people even get into the profession because they think it will be easier to travel out to Europe, to America, and then to find proper jobs and make more money there. Uh, my guest is Corby Blay. He's a psychiatric nurse. Let's hear what people had to say on the streets. Cynthia, what experience have you had with a nurse? Actually, I was admitted at the 37 hospital. When I went there, they told me there was no bed. I was dying, although, but they told me there was no nurse. And then uh, one nurse saw me, and then he quickly said, ah, I know you, before they gave me a bed. If not because of the nurse, I would have been dead by now. So, so the nurse knew you, that's how come he yeah, offered he gave me a bed, if not. And then the bed too wasn't a bed. I sat on the chair for two days. They charged me. Of course, I didn't sleep on the bed. I was on a bench for two good days, but they took bed free. I wish I told myself I will see them when I get money in future. <laughs> a nurse has treated me well. When I was not feeling well, she had patience for me. I'm Simon. So I personally, I had a dis dislocation of my right shoulder, and um, the doctor at the Kolebu, one doctor, Ennis, treated me so well. So I would say that, relatively, at Kolebu, they have good attention for an emergency case but to some extent some people may say otherwise but with me i had a good treatment so i'll say yeah okay so what's your own story share with us zero three zero two two one one six nine one or two zero three zero two two one one six nine one or two Kobe, i hear you do a lot of advocacy works uh, I, I was just visiting your page your facebook page i uh, my attention was drawn to go there you do a lot of things what other private things do you do voluntarily okay so um i i'm a blogger okay i'm a health blogger actually um this year at the ghana social media and blogging awards um my blog won the ultimate award oh really the best blog and this blog has 
exclusively been used for their focus to the news information dissemination on health mm. and this is what I think that in at every corner in every on every platform that we are provided as professionals we continue to advocate on behalf of patient we continue to provide that information mm. when the patient is discharged like I said earlier we continue to show that care and those are some of the few examples that I have carried on so what I do is I use the social media space that I am to continue to provide information um, what are the alerts around um, listen to what people are saying about mm. um, nurses what people are saying about healthcare, and what people are saying about their own health mm. and interact with them on this okay um, we also uh, go further to meet up with people in the communities and share on their health and discuss mm. we choose subjects from different areas okay and so I'll, I'll come back and get the name of uh, of your blog yeah. and then i'll visit there and share the content what i see but let okay. me speak to abdul uh, who's on the line hello good morning hi good morning good morning yes sir thanks for holding thank you i want to contribute to the program please I'm do from Samaria. all right Sorry. okay I have a name myself and I just want to say a few things about the problem, the topic of discussion. Sure. It's normal to I mean have your listen, reservation about nurses as it happens in the other institutions like the banking institution and other institutions. Because when you come you have different type of characters in the nursing field, even though we're all expected to treat patients equally and I mean so humanity irrespective of where they are coming from. But you can see that the system sometimes doesn't permit us to render the quality of service patients, I mean, expect from when they come to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You come to the patient, uh, the hospital, and you have about 30 patients, and one nurse can take care of them. And he, such a nurse who is a human being, having personal problems and all sorts of issues. So when you come and, I mean, those systems are there, they put pressure on the net. Mm -hmm. And some people do find it difficult to, I mean, leave behind their personal issues and attend to the patients as expected. Sure. Mm. So where, yeah. do you, where do you practice? I'm practicing the Samaria Central Hospital. Okay. Uh, do you love your job? I mean, are you doing it because... Of did you, did you get into it so because you, you love to do it? That's why you, you, you decided to be a nurse? I love to do it. I love to do it. Since I was a kid, I, my mother wasn't a nurse. Uh, none of my parents were nurses, but I stayed with nurses in my area. And I actually enjoyed the way they were doing their work. So I admired them a lot. Mm. That inspired me to become a nurse. Okay. And when I got into nursing... I actually realized the way was an enjoyable one if you are able to impact positive in a uh, patient's life. Okay. You see somebody at the point of dying, the person gets to the hospital, and you play a role in getting the person recovered, and you feel satisfied. All right. It's actually a job I feel so satisfied doing it. Listen, you... you um, people... Mm -hmm. Yeah, please land. People, people, people have to understand that uh, nursing is... In normal work, as other work, I mean, other institutions that they know. So when you come, you will meet the good and bad ones, but they still don't always take that uh, bad, I mean, behavior they encounter to generalize. Okay, all right, listen. I remember there was a time a patient came to the hospital and after treatment, she called me. That, hey, is, that, is, that, is that how you would treat patient here? I have not been admitted. This is my first time. But the way you guys, I mean, relate to the patient in this world, I feel like not going home again. I'm so happy. I'm so impressed. <laughs> but you, you, when you are outside, you hear a lot of negative things about people. I said, that is it. We mm -hmm. are different type of people all together. Someone will come, encounter a bad person for the first time, and he goes home and generalize. So it's normal. Okay. It's all normal. right. <laughs> Listen, you are, you, are one, you are one of the people that we're celebrating today. So we thank you for sharing your experience with us. Let me speak to Lukman. Lukman, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm enjoying the program and I'm a, 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 a serial caller. Uh, nonetheless, uh, well, uh, nurses uh, plays an integral part in our society as far as the of uh, healthcare is concerned. However, 
it is worrying for us to appreciate the fact that the professional competence of nurses has been compromised. They have most nurses have no regard for ethical standards. They have tend to forget that the interpersonal relation between the nurse and the patient is one of the places where in the level of healing the patient. See, most of our nurses here, when you go to the hospital, especially in this part of our country, northern Ghana, you see, you go to the hospital, the clinic, you even take somebody there, and I don't know that, out of the frustration, the way they behave, they, you are going to equally go on that place and fall in sick. You become more frustrated. At least, at least it's a parent to their work. What have you said? We do have to say that the work is demanding, is frustrating, is challenging, there is pressure. But however, it is not anybody who has been given that open to work as I mean, you have been trained. So if you are trained as a professional, it is good for you to ensure that mm. that standard is met. Okay. So, Legally, our mm. healthcare process is indeed challenging. We cannot dispute the fact that nurses in this modern era of our health delivery process that does not play an integral part. But my issue to do with them is the way they behave, the attitudinal part of nurses is poor. You mm. even have to say the fact that they form the current Director General of Ghana Health Service lamented last week that there have been a series of concerns regarding to the foreign standard of nursing practices. I teach environmental health in a midweek training college uh, where Nandom uh, has a pattern to that. My students uh, have a high ethical consideration. But having a lot of friends and being engaged in the hotel process and see how nurses behave, in fact, it is worrying. Okay. Warning, All right. Look, one, we have to leave it here because of time. But I, I see the point <coughs> that you're making. Thank you very much. Let me speak to Vida, who is joining us from Suedru. My last call. Hello, Vida. Good Hello. morning. Hello. Good morning. I'm enjoying the program. And I also have this to say. You know, we all have our problems when it comes to the work that we do. But nurses are worth appreciating. I remember when I was del being delivered off of my twins. It will be 10 years in this December. In fact, the nurse was spectacular. I couldn't shave. And uh, this nurse, a male nurse, had to shave me and dress me up ready for uh, the doctor to come and have the CS. And this is worth mentioning. Though we have some bad nurses, we have very good and equally good ones. So we, they need to be appreciated when we are celebrating them today. Mm. As a teacher, when we are celebrating teachers, I also wish to be celebrated. Likewise, our nurses who are our co-professionals. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, when we are celebrating teachers, Vida, I'll remember you and I'll celebrate you. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Uh, and Vida's experience has made me, uh, you know, remember the nurses who also took care of me uh, when I was delivering, but I can't remember their names. I met wonderful people. Uh, and when you, when, you have a, when you have a nurse who is really nice, it makes you, I don't know, you're comfortable. Even though you're in pain, you're comfortable. It feels like, because, you know, I was forced to, I was encouraged. I wasn't forced, I was encouraged. You know, but it was more like a mother and a stubborn daughter, kind <laughs> of, to walk. <laughs> because, you know, when you do CS, you can't get up immediately. Yeah. But this was, you know, like a nurse who sort of understood, who encouraged me to do it. Uh, and, and it was good. And so some, some of you nurses are really, really nice. You heard all that people had to say. Yeah. I also <coughs> want to ask why you guys travel outside a lot. I'm sure some of your friends have gone. <laughs> and somebody has asked what, what you're still doing here in Ghana. <laughs> well, well, well. I think, um, like they say, greener pastures. People believe that the service they are providing, uh, it's, it's not being valued as it should especially when they compare it to how it's been valued mm. elsewhere. So definitely, it, some even get invitation to come and work in mm. institution out there. You did, some just won't go. Have you received an invitation yet? All right. Because you see, your area, <laughs> eh, that's a... And I'm not encouraging you to leave. <laughs> I just want to know why you haven't left. <laughs> As a psychiatric nurse, that's a very special area. Sure. So you would definitely probably have received an invitation or some of your friends have told you how lucrative it would be if you were to relocate we know how lucrative it is but mm -hmm. we also know how the situation is in our country when it comes to mental health when you have over 95 percent still not receiving the mental health care that they should and if you really a nurse who is very passionate about the work who cares about the health of people 
no amount of invitation will take you in the way. Okay. Because we believe, or we have always lived by the fulfillment of the work. We would have left, all of us would have left long ago. We are fulfilled by the work. When you are working in an institution, when you are exposed to all infections, when I could be attacked, and some have been attacked, some have had injuries all over, and they never get compensation for them. When people have to risk all themselves to work tirelessly, some slip their disc. By the time they are going on pension, they are given TV sets to just go with it as nurses, as midwives who have worked for over 30 years. Then you, you, we really need to understand that, well, it is the fulfillment of the work that mm. is at heart. And some of us, we are young though, although we have worked for a while, we still believe that it is our duty and the only part that could be rewarded is to be fulfilled in the work we do. Even against all some of the insults, even against some of the critics, the bad namings, we think that is going to shape us and mm -hmm. we are going to be better. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been practicing? I think uh, the last five years. Oh, okay. What's the name of uh, your blog? Um, how do I get there? <coughs> so it's ghanahealthnest.com. Ghana Health Nest. Okay, and I know that you use this particularly when uh, Ebola was every you know, when we're talking about Ebola. You use this uh, to put up a campaign, and I want to understand how you went about it. Okay, so I also had the news of the Ebola outbreak, and when I got on social media, <coughs> I all what I could see was um, America has brought the, the the thing again, um, they have invaded. Uh, 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 our country again. And this is that, this is that, this is that. So there were a lot of conspiracy theories that were being shared on social media. And you know how fast some of these bad news sells mm. and it goes. And in my practice or in my line of work, I understand how information is key into getting things down, into achieving the best results. And I decided that, well, let me go and find out because this is the first time Ebola was even in the air like that. But there was not much documentation on the disease. And just last year, we had a lot of journals being open access for us to read. So I took my time to go and read what was happening and decided that, well, let me not join the conspiracy theories. Even some colleagues have done. Let me see how best I can change a post, a comment at a time. We're telling them what they need to know. So I started that, started a group on Facebook. Then I saw that, well, the information just on social media will not be enough because where people are accessing through the country, where people are coming through the country, the borders, people interacting in the communities and all that, the handshakes, where we know we have been told or we have come to understand that it enables the spread of the condition if anyone has it and is ill. We have to get down to the people. So then I started asking people online to volunteer to advocate on Ebola. So by then, I had gone to be part of a training on the Ebola disease. And then I gathered these people who were interested. So they signed up on our page, on the website, ghanahealthness.com. And then what they did was they signed up. I got their details, got in touch with them. And then they joined. They came down to some meeting areas that we had. Because of this, I was able to come vast over 300 volunteers across the country from um, Eastern Region, Ashanti, Greater Accra, Bronga Hafo, and other parts of the country. And these volunteers, I gave them the capacity training with support from some few friends. And then we went ahead into the communities to do hand washing demonstration, how mm. people could wash their hands. Whilst we educated them, we did poster pasting. We, we went into homes to demonstrate how they could prevent this Ebola disease if in case it should show head or how they could identify and report to the nearest hospital. So it was very instrumental. We were able to connect with a few people. We continued the education online. And by the time we started, our group, group page had close to 2,000 people joining in. And there were real people who were interacting with us who could give a phone call mm. that I want to do this. This is why I am. Sometimes they can't be with us. 
and so we will send them the educational materials that we were to using. keep spreading the message yes with it. yes yes mm. and it and it was so good people even, we had a lady who had to travel all the way from us to come and join one of our advocacy wow. programs and amazing it's been wonderful it's been wonderful it tells us also that social media works when we use it well yeah uh, and listen on this day you are one of the people that we recognize and celebrate when we are uh, celebrating this day recognizing this day set aside for nurses we need a lot more of the Kobe blaze I know that there are some wonderful nurses out there and we know that the challenges are huge you're not paid well you're not paid well <laughs> sometimes you don't have places to sleep no transports no resources even on the job so we understand you uh, know nurses are the nurses are not supposed to tell about your problems when a nurse says I'm sick, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it's, it's not possible for yeah. a nurse to be sick. It's not possible for a nurse to complain. You, you don't have to complain. Yeah, you know, when, if you're Mr. Fixer, nobody <laughs> expects you to be fixed. Yes. Because you're supposed to be perfect. But before anything guess, fixes, yeah. it, it, it must be in the best of shape. It must be in good health. It, it must have the best form of thinking. It, it must also have the best of support mm. to be able to deliver what it has to yeah, do. Yeah, sure. Like someone was talking about beds. Nurses don't do beds. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I get the point. But listen, where are you? Where, which of the hospitals are you attached to? Okay, so presently I'm working at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And for the first time, I'm working at an institution that for the first time has been established. And it is the psychiatric ward. Now, Kolebu is the leading tertiary institution in the country now mm -hmm. and in the sub-region. So what we have seen, or the, the, the changing trend in mental health care um, has become that we are moving directly to the people. We are letting the general institutions also provide that care. Because it is so obvious when I get home and I say that I was admitted at Accra Psychiatric Hospital. Everybody, Everybody knows. And <laughs> we know about this stigma and all that. Yeah. So when you are treating from a general setting and you find out that you go back home after discharge, where were you? I was at Rachel Hospital. I was at Kolebu. <laughs> Sorted. Like, who, no stigma. Who, <laughs> no, nobody, yes. nobody would know which of the departments yeah, you were. Nobody is going okay. to actually find you are well. And that's yeah. what's most important. And the marginalization and the, the uh, discrimination stigma goes down. Mm. And that is the changing trend in mental health now. Sure. That the new mental health authority is putting in place to make sure that every institution, every corner of the country, there should be a mental health care facility that will be able to give care to people with even the mild form of conditions mm. before they get to severe, sure. before we have to go to the street and catch people to put them somewhere. Yeah. So that is where I am and it's been good so far. Yeah. So we encourage everyone, even if you think you are just worried, Get come, there. come and talk. Come, let's okay, talk. Just worry. Okay, just yeah. come, let's talk. All right, Kobe, listen, I thank you for being here. Maybe one of these days we will have another show where we'll ask people who are worried, who have concerns. You'll be with me here. Okay. We'll listen to people and then you'd encourage them. Yeah. How about we do that someday? Oh, we're always ready. Okay, cool. Thank and you so I'm, much. And I'm here to represent the many nurses out there sure. who might not have, have had the time the to be here. Spirit, definitely. So, all right. Um, I'm grateful for all of your support. Sure. Enjoy and this day. Uh, 12 of May comes once in a year. It's a special day where everybody has to be nice to nurses. So enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Stay with us here on the show. Talk is up next.